What up guys and welcome back to Thomas Reacts here on the 360 experience with myself Thomas Maba. So guys today I want us to look at ANC Youth League man. I want you to listen to, to the president of ANC Youth League. So guys recently the, the president of ANC Youth League Colin Malachi was speaking with the DJs boo on the virtual mkuku yeah i think it's a virtual mkuku episode and on this episode they spoke about the anc youth league conference they spoke about 2024 elections they spoke about the unemployment rate and today guys i want us to focus on the part where they are talking about the image of the african national congress and how is the president of the anc youth league is going to to help transform the image of the african national congress so guys i watched this whole interview i watched like 49 minutes listening to an, a, a member of the African National Congress. So please give me a shout out because I listened to this interview so that you won't have to be subjected to such nonsense. But today I want you to, 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 to hear the, the ideas that the ANC Youth League president has to transform the image of the African National Congress. <laughs> Pure comedy, man. <laughs> and how do, how, do, how do you fix the, um, what's in, the image? But, the, but, but that your organization has right now. Look, the only way to fix it is to act on the wrongs. And it must be known. You know, uh, you, you can't talk about it, you know. That's what I'm saying, that the youth league must also be ambassadors of, against corruption. First of all, guys, they, the ANC Youth League cannot be the ambassadors against corruption when they are pushing for CADA deployment. These people are pushing for CADA deployment and on one hand they are saying that they must be the, the ambassadors against corruption. So how, how, how does it make sense? You cannot push for, for CADA deployment on one hand and on the other hand be the ambassador against corruption. Because guys, you understand that South Africa is where it is right now because of CADA deployment. We are where we are because we have incompetent ministers who don't know what they are doing. That's why South Africa is crumbling the way that it is. And the, these guys, the ANC Youth League, they are pushing for this policy policy of of of, of cater deployment man they are pushing for the for the policy of cater deployment so to me it makes no sense how can you push for the policy of cater deployment and at the same time be the ambassador against corruption to, it makes no sense to me it makes no sense to me we know the results of cater deployment to south africa right now today it is where it is right now because of cater deployment the 60 percent of young people in this country they are not working it is because of cater deployment our infrastructure Scrambling. It is because of cadre deployment. You can see our healthcare scrambling. It's because of of cadre deployment. Our border systems. They are, like we literally don't have borders right now in South Africa. So if you are watching from Nigeria or if, if you are watching from Congo and you want you, you would like to come and have a nice life, just come to South Africa because in South Africa they we don't have borders in this country. And the worst part is that the the the, the, the citizens, the poor citizens of South Africans, are being forced to share the, the the working space with these guys who come outside of South Africa. They are being forced to share the hospital beds with these guys who come from outside of South Africa when these guys are not even the taxpayers of this country. So I don't understand how can the African National Congress Youth League push for cadre deployment and at the same time they talk about being the ambassadors against corruption. To me, it makes no sense. Uh, we must go to departments. The young people of the country must see us practically marching to ITC asking for set aside. So that guys, we have set aside for youth. Where are they? Who are you giving these things to? Disclose them. It must be public known. Public money when it's spent, it must be known to spend too. Why is it made a secret? Uh, you know, if teachers uh, uh, were given uh, money by IT, it must not be a secret. It must be known that just uh, must. If the system must be published, uh, a young person must be able to Google in at uh, department of small and businesses how many black businesses have been given resources and who are these black businesses. Uh, the NYD has given grants. How many grants have you taken? It, you, you can't run with people, the state resources, people's money, and run it in secret. It was not a secret. The uh, supply chain processes must be made public. It must be known. <laughs> it's so fun for him to say this when the ANC is doing everything in their power to seal their, their, their CADA deployment records. The ANC right now has gone to the highest court in South Africa to seal the records of CADA deployment. And this guy is talking about transparency. <laughs> <laughs> man you can't with the african national congress you can't man you can't make this stuff up this guy is talking about transparency but right now the african national congress is at the highest court trying to seal the records of of, of, of cadre deployment they don't want the public to see how they they employ these people they don't want us to see anything they don't want to see uh, they don't want us to see anything but you have this guy here 
who's saying that the ANC must be transparent? How? Uh, that uh, in the Kurlane where I'm from, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a adjudication process uh, for building of roads. Uh, these are 50 companies that have applied. This is how they adjudicate it. We must not run in secret. At the moment we don't run in secret, I can tell you. People will start to see, but the reality is that uh, these people are transparent now. They are ready to self-correct. Let's come back into the elections. <laughs> Do you think the NC is going to perform about 50% hmm. national? If the NC resolve all the things I've mentioned. How can the ANC resolve all of those things in seven months when they couldn't resolve all of those things in 30 years? The ANC has failed to resolve a lot of issues in 30 years and you are hoping for them to resolve those issues in seven, in seven months. How is that possible, man? How is it possible? So admit it that the African National Congress is not going to get 50%. Admit it. Yeah, in this interview, they can even perform way above that. The most important thing is to get people to go and vote. Those that I love the ANC are not prepared to vote for another position. Uh, uh, I but that, that way, way, on that point is telling the truth, man. The 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 the, 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 the African National Congress has a solid base, man. The African National Congress has a very solid base. People who will always go out there and vote for the African National Congress, and it's not hard for the ANC to to convince these people to go to the polls and vote. Majority of people in the African National Congress are not shy to go to the polls and vote. It's always us, you know us, the clever blacks, always tweeting, always posting, always complaining. But when it's time to do something, we don't want to, to we don't even want to, to, to hear anything about the elections. But the African National Congress, man, when it comes to mobilizing these people, they know how to mobilize. They know where their people are and they know how to rile up their people so that their people can go to the to the polls and vote. But when you look at these opposition parties, man, the opposition parties, man, are going to have a tough time in 2024. The opposition parties are about to learn the hard way that complaining about load shedding and trying to expose the ANC on, 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 on service delivery, man, it, it is not going to work. These guys are going to see that the majority of South, of South Africans, they don't, they don't know them. They don't know them because what? They are not ready to serve. They are not ready to come to our townships. They are not ready to open up a dialogue with our people. They are not ready to, 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 to tell our people what their plans are. They are not ready to open up our people's eyes and make them see what is really happening in our country. They are not ready to do that. They simply want to do these conferences in certain convention centers. They, they simply want to do these interviews with, with the mainstream media. They simply want to, to be on the newspapers. They don't want to come to the grassroots and fight to, 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 to kick to kick the ANC out of governance but when it comes to the African National Congress man these people they know how to mobilize and it is one thing man that other political parties don't know how to do and when you look at this thing the majority of, of, of South Africans are not interested in voting so it is going to be so interesting to see how how, how opposition parties are going to convince the people who, who didn't vote in the in, in the previous elections to go and vote in 2024 because if you know if if we have to depend on the people who voted in 2019 then the ANC is going to win the elections again so the only fight or the only chance that these opposition parties have is by it's by mobilizing the people who didn't even vote in the in the previous elections and to mobilize them and encourage them to go to the polls and vote in 2024 that is the only way that these people can 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 can, can defeat the african national congress but right now in our townships People are sick and tired of politics, man. People, they don't want to hear politics. When you, when you mention politics, the first thing that comes to people's minds is the African National Congress. When you, when you talk about elections, people will tell you there's no need for me to go out there and vote. There's no need for me. That's what people are saying. That's why people are staying at home and not voting, man. And you know what's crazy about the members of the African National Congress? If they are angry at their party, if the members of the African National Congress are angry at the ANC, they don't go to vote. They don't go to vote and, and, and vote for another party. No, they don't vote for another party. They sit at home. They simply abstain from voting. So if these opposition parties really are serious about taking down the African National Congress, they must convince the people who didn't participate in the previous elections to participate in 2024. If they cannot convince average South Africans who didn't participate in 2020, who didn't participate in 2019, to participate in 2024, man, there is no chance that these guys can take down the ANC. You see, when it comes to mobilizing, man, the African National Congress, they know what they are doing. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. You cannot defeat the African National Congress from certain convention center. Please tell these opposition parties, guys, if you, you, you are closer to some of these guys who are working with the opposition parties, please tell them that they will never 
defeat the African National Congress from Sentinel Convention Center. Before, if they are not ready to come to, to our townships, they are not ready to save the people, to save the people, because these guys, there's a huge problem when it comes to politicians, because everyone wants to be a leader, and I'm like, all of us are being led by all of these fools, each fool, everyone can wake up in the morning and decide to be a, 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 to be a leader, man, in South Africa, it's a mess, we're living in a mess country, man, everyone can wake up one day and just simply decide to be a leader, man, you look at this guy, this guy, this guy says he's a leader, <laughs> Ambassadors, so the NCS can work for us. All of them are not happy for the what they are doing and how they treat, uh, how they manage the state. If we can just sell correct, I can tell the NCS even perform above sixty. Are you scared? No, no, not scared. We are going to work hard. They are going to make sure that anyway. The, the last elections, the NCS went that the youth league. Uh, it's the first time the NCS now goes to election with a strong NCS youth league to realize them people plan the pain of the NCS. And this guy is speaking like. The NC Youth League is relevant. Man, the ANC Youth League is not relevant, man. No one is talking about the ANC Youth League in our townships, man. Young people in this country, man, you know young people in this country are so hopeless. Young people in this country are so hopeless. Because for some reason, when 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 the ANC Youth League so-called leadership was announced, for some reason young people in this country thought that is maybe, maybe, just maybe our challenges will be addressed. But guess what? These guys are simply focusing are focusing on 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 Julius Malema. They are focusing on on national politics. They don't care about the issues that are affecting young people in this country right now. They don't care. They don't care about the issues that are that that are, are facing young people in, in in this country right now. I haven't I haven't heard them saying anything that has to do with young people, man. They don't they don't say anything. They don't have plans, man. So young people in this country, man, you, they must just, they, like, they might as well forget about this youth league, man. <laughs> and you know how people were, people are so old, optimistic. You know when it comes to the, to the ANC, every, everybody knows that the ANC will always disappoint you, man, when it comes to, to picking up their leadership. But every time when the ANC says, we're going to, 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 to reveal the new leadership, every time when the president says, I'm changing the cabinet, for some reason, people believe that the president is going to announce a well-capable cabinet that is going to, 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 to work hard for South Africans, man, but only to find out that these ministers are, 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 are simply being shifted around. If, if you were a minister of transport, you are now the minister of telecommunication. The minister of telecommunication is now the minister of health. No, like You, you have to understand that this person knows nothing about health care. The minister of health care is now the minister of police. The minister of police. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's why every time when Ramaphosa announces a new cabinet, people are so angry with him. People get angry with Ramaphosa every time he announces the cabinet because for some reason people think that Ramaphosa is going to announce the cabinet of people who, who are capable and qualified to do the job that they are tasked only to find out that you still got to have Nkosazana Lamizuma as the, the minister of youth league. Man. I'm telling you, not, just imagine Nkosazana Lamizuma is the minister of, of, of youth in this country. Yes, a 74-year-old woman is a minister of youth in this country. And the ANC, they have a youth league structure, man. <laughs> but Ramaphosa decided that a 74-year-old woman is the proper woman to lead young people in this country. And on the ANC youth league, they decide on this guy. Who barely makes sense when he speaks. <laughs> to realize them to plan the pain of this. As somebody who's led people to the Lutuli house and who was fighting against the youth league being disbanded, Having seen how far the EFF has gone, because um, it's them, it's those young people who built that organization, how did it make you feel to see FNB Stadium as full as it was on Saturday last week? Look, it was a, it was a scary moment uh, because FNB is a very big stadium. You know, even if uh, I, I know, if you, if you are going to put in voting terms, there is two seats in parliament. Uh, you can get the EFF two seats in parliament. But for the fact that the, the EFF, a, a, a young organization that is uh, 10 years, uh, who takes from us, you know, the EFF doesn't take from, takes from the youth league, you know, was able to fill FNB Stadium is a problem. But you see, the most important thing that we need to address is that uh, the youth of the country will start to know the truth. Uh, because, uh, you know, when there is no leadership, people can indicate left and go right. Uh, uh, inconsistencies of, uh, we'll, we'll explain to them that some of the political parties are following the inconsistent on the message. Uh, today they say go up, tomorrow they say go down, you know. 
Why are you even focusing on other political parties instead of the structure that you are supposed to be to lead? You are concerned about the EFF and, and, and exposing them instead of leading this youth league, man. <laughs> this is the reason why I say these guys, they don't care about the young people in this country, man. I'm telling you. Uh, today they say we want the land back. When we say let's vote and get the land, they say, no, no, this is how we want the land back. Now, there's just uh, inconsistencies because uh, <laughs> when political parties grow, and one thing you must know, they tend to attract uh, foreign uh, uh, funders who have a responsibility to take the initiative of power. Now, the moment you attack foreign funders, you go to Britain, you take money, you can take money. No matter how radical you are, you are going to change in policy positions. I can give an example on the issue of the land. We agreed, the uh, of China is clear, uh, that political party that was an FNB agreed with us that uh, the land shall belong to the people. We lobbied, we moved. The ANC had no majority in parliament to do that. Ne? When we were supposed to vote together on the issue of the land, the principle changed. After they came back from the UK and British, Britain, you know they were there, the photos were visible. The principle changed, they know, they, they create a small technicality to make it impossible to amend the, to amend the constitution of the land. They say that the land must belong to the state, which is against the same kernel pillars they, they speak about, which says that the land shall belong to the people. Now, those are issues that I'm saying that uh, we, we need to speak about. Our people must know, must voice them out to say that sometimes uh, in Germany they've done it before. They went and voted for a political party that has driven on populism. Uh, but what is inconsistent about saying that the land must belong to the state because the state is the one that is going to distribute the land to the people. So if you say that the land must belong to the people, who is going to distribute the land? Who is going to distribute the land? So what is inconsistent about saying that the land must belong to the state? So simply saying that the land must belong to the people, what are you saying when you say that the land must simply belong to the people? Because the land must belong to the state so that the state can distribute the land to the people. <laughs> Raising slogans that are not implementable. Then when the people of Germany started to question the Hitler on why are you not implementing the things, they started to kill the people of Germany because they couldn't explain anymore why they are not implementing things that have been raising. Now we must be careful also in South Africa where people must not take advantage of the weaknesses that were faced in the country and say rhetorics of things that they can't implement, then ultimately our people vote for them to be in power, then they end up becoming the enemy of the people because they can't explain. If you can check the manifesto of the EFF, there's no budget of South Africa that can carry that. It's not practical and uh, how it's been done. Now, I'm just saying that I don't want to speak much about that, but I'm just saying that we have the responsibility to go and brief society. This guy says that the manifesto of the, of the EFF, there's no budget to support the manifesto of the EFF, but the same guy, the same, this, this guy, the, the man that you are seeing on your screen right now, Conan Malaji, was on stage when the, the, the ANC Youth League was celebrating the 79 years and saying that young people in this country must be given 1,500. Young people who are not working in this country must be given 1,500. So the 350s that people are receiving right now, they must be raised from 350 to, 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 to 1,500. And young graduates and unemployed graduates must be, must be paid 4,500. So where is the budget to support that? Where is, this, where, where is the budget to support that? Because this guy is pushing for, for, for the increment of, grant, of grants, saying that the 350s must go from 350 to 1,500. He's saying that if you, are, if you have graduated and, 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 and you haven't found any employment, the, 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 the government must give you 4,500. So you can just imagine that how many young people in this country who have graduated, if, if, if the government was, support, if, was to give them 4,500 each and every month, can you imagine how much the government would, would be spending on these people who are sitting at home doing nothing? So, where is the budget for that? Does, this, does South Africa have budget to, to, to increase the grants from 350 to 1,500 to give un, uh, unemployed graduates 4,500 for simply sitting at home and doing nothing? So, that's what I'm saying, guys. It is funny when, when, when you hear these guys talk about the inconsistencies and everything. But they don't talk about like what oh, oh, they, they they don't talk about their own policies, man. This guy was on stage talking about four thousand five hundred. <sighs> about the lies that they are briefed on, about the things that are not possible and what is possible, and give it upon the youth of South Africa to decide whether they want to follow an organization of uh, people who are inconsistent 
uh, who tomorrow they speak left and go right or go right speak. and guys is this the reason why people are fearing this idea of ANC going into coalition with with the EFF because these guys they they, they always talk they always talk insane things man the ANC and the EFF man they always take like they always talk insane stuff so so is this the reason why right now people are are, are, are feeling sideways when it comes to this coalition of the ANC and the EFF man because <laughs> and do you believe that if the ANC and the EFF goes into coalition man do you do you believe that Ramaphosa and, and, and Malema will hold each other accountable man do you do, do you believe that Ramaphosa and Malema will hold each other accountable if the ANC and the EFF was to go into coalition because you, you, you listen to these people speak man and you're like damn man even even with the EFF the EFF was speaking about increasing the grants the EFF was talking about supplying the the, 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 the new like Hey, this, hey guys, these guys are talking about a lot of money. They're talking about the taxpayers' money, man. <laughs> They're talking about the taxpayers' money, man. You know, I didn't want to look at this fear of the ANC governing the country with the EFF. But just like, just like I told you guys, my friend told me that there is no way that Ramaphosa and Malema will hold each other accountable, man. There is no way. There is no way. I don't care who, 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 who says anything. There is no way. There's no way Malema and Ramaphosa can hold each other accountable. And maybe this is the reason why there are fears among South Africans about this coalition of the ANC and the EFF. Man, you know, these guys, all of them, they love, they love money. Malema loves money. Malema, Malema loves luxurious life. And he's not even shy to say that he loves luxurious life. And the ANC members, you know that these guys, they live for luxury, man. So is this the fear that people have when, when, when it comes to, 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 to ANC actually going into coalition with the EFF because these guys, their policies are insane, man. They're insane. It's almost as if they don't want to see South Africans being freed, man. It's like, depend on the government. We're going to roll out the policies that are going to make sure that you depend on the government. Damn, man. Nah, 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 man. Left all the want to follow an organization that is honest to them about challenges that they're faced with and how to work together to, to resolve them. Your stance on coalitions? Look, uh, I don't think it works. Uh, I know uh, uh, the research is saying the future is coalitions, but the coalitions is delay service delivery. Um, but the future is coalitions, but the coalitions is delay service delivery. He says coalitions delay service delivery, man. As if South Africans have experienced the service delivery. So guys, please tell me what you think, man, on, on, on the comment section, man. I, I, I am so painful right now. I need to rest because I spent 49 minutes listening to, 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 to these guys before I could come and react to this video. And I must say that it is the most painful interview to listen to. So I wouldn't advise you to go out there and subject yourself to this nonsense. Guys, please tell me what you think on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button in the most important part. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.